introduction, nice bio, but kind of light on, on the facts behind the facts <laughs> and the visuals. Okay, so actually you could stand, so you, you need to see the screen here. So Pete Taylor, we're just going to take a brief moment. This is your life. <laughs> now, there are going to be two or three finds in this. So if you ever watch This Is Your Life, the TV show, put a dollar on the table, okay? So there was a reference to radio. Now, you remember these radios? I have three of them. Okay, you remember this radio? Yes. Do you remember what this decade was? <laughs> 60s, I, it, the transistor radio. What was that radio station? Oh, okay. KMPR. No, Don't get the W. WKRP in Cincinnati. Now, you're a DJ here. You're a DJ there. What era were you? Was this like the summer of love you were there? Or a little later? Or? Okay, Scott McKenzie. Now, now we get serious. Do you remember this album? Okay, now this next photo as Rotary is my witness, is amazing. <laughs> you recognize that gentleman? Where the hell did I get that? Is that what you said? <laughs> it's on the internet. It must be true. I swear, you Google yourself. In the images, this was the cut line. Pete Taylor, k Paul FM, head DJ in the 60s. You ready for one more? Are you you're doing voiceover work there, right? Yes. All right. You were a handsome guy back then. <laughs> okay, were it, was it the home of quality rock and roll then? Uh, no, it was right before that. Was that a reflection on what you were playing? Or? Okay, it was class. Okay. You, so it wasn't rock and roll in your day. Okay. It, it went sideways after you left. <laughs> okay, here's one. There was a reference to the fact he played tennis, just socially, I understand. What were you doing on September 20th, 1973? I gave you a hint. It's a Thursday. Thursday. In the evening. I was either at Dave Bond or playing tennis. I'm playing tennis. How many people were not alive in 1973? <laughs> okay. Okay, you owe a buck. <laughs> And then we're going to move right along. This is a hint of what many of us were doing. Now watch this. I don't know. It just seems, seems coincidental, but yeah, there was something there. Okay. Billie Jean King versus Bobby Riggs. The Battle of the Sexes. $100,000 winner take all. If you did not watch this match on TV, you owe a dollar. Okay, so they came in, there was pomp and circumstance, 30,000 people, Houston Astrodome. They played three sets, three out of five. Billie Jean King had never played three out of five because women only played two out of three. They weren't strong enough to play three out of five. That's not my belief. Now, here's the one. He jumps over the net. Mr. Pete Taylor, who won this match? Straight sets? 6-4, 6-3, Now it's time for a brief rematch. In morning's battle today, Billie Jean King, played by Janet Olinger, Bobby Riggs. Give it up for Billie Jean in Boston. You're going to play three out of five points. We'll let you rally once or twice. The winner, since I couldn't find any sugar daddies, three boxes of sugar babies. Where is the camera when you need it? It's on camera. You better move the flag there. Move the flag back. Give pizza. Okay. You, you get three practice hits. There's one. Whoa. Taylor's got game. Okay, practice number two. Oh, okay, okay. 
and number three, and then we really start. Okay, okay could you spin the racket to see who serves? Do you have an M or W or what have you got there? Do you know how to spin a racket? How did your daughter get so good? Okay, you call it M or W. Do you want to serve or, kick or receive? I'll serve, I'll serve. Okay, let, I guess he's, he's the gov district governor. Okay, so here's the deal. If we're going to play three out of five points. So you serve one, you serve one. Are we doing okay? <laughs> doing okay. Oh, 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 okay. And, and this guy, he's the scorekeeper. So how are we doing? You get a, you got to practice, sir. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, it's two, sir. All right. All right, are you ready? Oh. Where's the ball boy when you need him? He's not a double ball. Yeah, that was our first serve. Okay. What's the score? One. And who's serving now? One for Billy Jean. How many total points? We're playing three out of five points. So who's serving? Two. Five, Okay. Control how it's done. Yeah. Ooh. Oh. 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 One apiece. <laughs> that was out. One apiece. Okay. Oh. That was out. <laughs> no, it was. <laughs> Is it the truth? I can't. <laughs> You know, the crowd can, can applaud during these things. Oh. What's the score? Okay, that's it. So, Pete has to jump over the net, shake hands with your opponent. Oh, this is a photo opportunity there. Oh, here, and award him with the sugar babies. One for each point. And now you get to give a call. <laughs> you can keep the candy, but he needs the right. <laughs> it's right up here, sir. You're set. I'm exhausted. <laughs> Rob, that was fun. Thank you very much. How about a big hand for Rob? Okay. Scott, your introduction was very well, well read. Thank you very much. And of course, it was impeccably written. Thank you very much for the thunderous applause. I hope I get that much when I'm finished. And uh, if I do, I hope it's because of what I said and not because I'm finally through. As some of you may know, we did have to switch the date of my presentation around because Christine had a little accident. She fractured her femur as we were just about ready to take off on a, a club trip. And uh, she's obviously great right now. But she was a little depressed during this period because she missed out on hearing 21 of my presentations. <laughs> But she's survived. Thanks, because I give her some CDs of my speeches. <laughs> I'd like to acknowledge a few people in this club. It's sort of like old home week coming back here, so happy to be here. Uh, Kathleen Fitzitakis, nice to see you again. She's an alumnus, uh, alumna of uh, Tacoma A. And let's see, Brett Willis, are you here? Another one. And Cameron Fellows was in our club briefly. So anyway, good to see you all. I also want to acknowledge some people who've uh, worked on the district level. Karen Orr has uh, done visioning and has been very effective, along with Scott, no less. And let's see, Virginia Ferguson, who worked on GSE for quite some time. So thank you all for your contribution to the district in the past. I'm delighted to have you 
I submit the name of a candidate for district governor. Outstanding. Very good. <coughs> I'm allergic to air and water. Other than that, it's going to be a good morning. <coughs> I also want to acknowledge, I believe, Dina Wallace-York is your newest member, July 17th. Yes, there you are. And I also want to acknowledge some of your charter members going back to April 7th, 1981. Bob Adler, Rick Carr, and Jim Walton. So please congratulate them for their many years of continued service. I'll just put this on the laptop. <laughs> what a place to put it. I'm going to put it over here. Thank you. Okay. District governors elect have to go to a little thing called the International Assembly. And if you don't go to the International Assembly, you don't become a district governor. And so this consists of 538 incoming district governors from around the world. So we tend to group because we are in a zone, zone 25 and 26. It's sort of an arc which goes from Vancouver Island down through California, a little bit of Nevada and through Arizona. So there's 23 of us who uh, bonded and we communicate a lot. We have a lot of fun together anytime we have had a major rotary function. And so each year, this group comes up with a name for itself. So we decided to call ourselves the Energizers because there was a lot of energy in the room. We communicated very well. Great ideas went back and forth. And we just had a good time together. So I passed this on to the club presidents and asked them to come up with the name of somebody in their club who is worthy of the Energizer Award. And Karen came up with the name of Bob Respa. So Bob, would you please come up and receive this pen? <laughs> Energizer Award goes to the person in the cloud who has an unlimited amount of energy. I think we've already seen that this morning. And is just always ready to help whenever asked. So Bob, here is your pen. It's uh, one of very few around. It is an atom with uh, swirling concentric circles, and it just depicts a great deal of energy. Just relax. <laughs> I'll let you put it on. So, congratulations, Bob. Yeah. Rick King is a past president of, Inter of Rotary International. He's an excellent speaker, very motivational. But Rick will be in a very serious part of his presentation, and somebody will come up with a camera and... <laughs> but he's a great speaker if you have an opportunity. I want to ask myself some frequently asked questions. I mean, I'll lie awake at night asking myself these things and then wake up without an answer, so maybe you can provide some. Why do district governors visit clubs? I can, I, can, I can wait. No. We are the, our officers of Rotary, and it is our obligation to have some idea of what the clubs are doing. The main object of it is so there is some continuity. So if you go from one Rotary club and then visit another one, there's some similarity. There's something which is in common with them all. So that's our primary duty. We don't have to do it this way. We could do it on an area by area. We're very fortunate here because we have Area 7 and 8 mixing together, 15 clubs. So I could say, let's just do one big meeting and have all the members of all 15 clubs come together for one presentation. That doesn't work, because I would not have a chance to get to sense the flavor of each and every club. I would not have a sense to find out how 15 clubs provide rotary service 15 different ways. And that's what it's all about. That's why we're here, just to get an idea of how you are going about serving your community and the world. And it's extremely rewarding. It's a marvelous experience. What are the perks of being a district governor? Well, we get 86 rotary meals. <laughs> That's pretty good. But you say there are 88 clubs, but only 86 meals. Why is that? Two clubs are five o'clock clubs, which do not serve meals. And uh, 
that's sort of interesting. They really do. They serve a need, though. I mean, so we, in this town, we have morning, noon, and evening clubs. Tacoma Sunset just got chartered at the end of June, and they're active. And they meet at the uh, Harmon Pub, whatever it is up there. Every Thursday at 4.30, you're most welcome to come by. So, one of the other perks of being a district governor. Well, first of all, it's very nice having the assistant governor bow. We sort of like that. <laughs> And then, of course, even more important than that, the district governor is the lowest level Rotary officer whose name is allowed in the obituary column of the Rotarian magazine. <laughs> <laughs> Why do district governors wear ties? Not too many ties around here today. Why do I wear one? I've got about 30 Rotary ties at home in the closet. You know, I'm not going to wear them next year. <laughs> but this tie, which, which you were looking at, which I'm sharing with you, will be an heirloom by the time I get through my tour. And that's because it will have souvenirs on it from 86 Rotary Meals. <laughs> Scotch card simply doesn't always work, Christine. Anyway, anyway it, it's a nice tie. I like this. Why do we sing both anthems? A lot of the clubs think it's because I'm Canadian. I'm, I'm really not. I was born in New Jersey. But it's an international district, so we honor both countries when the governor shows up at a club. And so that's good. And some clubs do sing the anthem a little better than others. I wish you'd heard the one at Gig Harbor Midday yesterday. That was interesting. Everybody's getting the music off the internet. And um, the words don't always seem to follow the music, but that's okay. <laughs> but you did very well. You did very well. Thank you. I'm here fairly early in the year. In other words, I'll be doing this through the end of January, maybe even into February, I'm not sure. So early October is pretty, you know, early on my 88 club visits to come and visit this club, so why would I do that? Maybe because I don't have to worry, it's the best club in the district. Is that possible? <laughs> I don't hear anything. Okay. <laughs> Maybe I'm here early because Karen needs more help than anybody else? <laughs> no. There's no rhyme or reason the way the schedule is set up. It would be very nice to do one a day over 18 weeks, but it doesn't work out that way. 25 clubs meet on Wednesday, okay? 11 meet on Monday, 11 meet on Friday. So you just can't do a whiz bang schedule. You just gotta mix them up as best you can. So, here I am. What you see is what you get. <laughs> Now, a question for all of you, and I'm sure some of you have been asked this from time to time. Anytime I go to a major Rotary function and I'm asked to do anything at all, someone will ask me, Pete, what was your Rotary moment? The Rotary moment is described as the time you changed from being a member of a Rotary club to being a Rotarian. A little bit of difference. Does anybody want to give that a try? When did some of you become a Rotarian. What was your Rotary moment? Anybody been to Africa on a Rotary polio mission? Anybody been to India on a water mission? Those are the responses you hear most often. People who have been abroad, who have been involved in vaccinate, providing oral vaccination to a child. Very meaningful, quite a moment. I didn't do any of that. I have not been abroad in any sort of a Rotary mission. I did go to the Rotary International Convention in 1987 in Philadelphia. Uh, Christine had some uh, friends there, so we decided to stay with them. And we didn't tell them where we got there. But so we decided to take in the uh, RI Convention while, while we were there. So I went on a Tuesday, and uh, somebody got up on the stage and said, we did not meet the $100 million goal for polio money, which we projected last year. And I said, hmm, I've been in Rotary for three years. What do I know about international service? What do I know about polio? And then the man finished. He said, we raised $220 million. And that was very meaningful. That meant to me, the organization's gonna be around for a while. The organization is gonna make commitments and it's going to achieve those commitments. That's what it meant to me, very meaningful. So, that took care of that. Now let's move on to something else which is almost as exciting as everything else I've said. And that is, do you remember doing the planning guide? 
I do. Okay. Do you remember what I put in it? It might have to fill out because before they become uh, president. We're supposed to do it in February and March. Half of it is devoted to what the club has done in the past, and the other half is devoted to what the club is going to do in the future during the year. A lot of work, a whole lot of work, and it has to involve input from just about everybody in the club. Very helpful and very useful. The three cornerstones of the planning guide are no surprise. Membership, foundation, and public information. Membership is static in Rotary. It's been about 1.2 million people for about 10 years. But there's been about a 75% turnover. So I think you can see what the issue is on that. The foundation. Surely the foundation of Rotary is the Rotary Foundation. Where would we be without the foundation? We'd be another social club or something. But this gives us something to drive for, something to shoot for, and makes us very proud as we do things around the world. And public information. This is relatively new. 25 years ago, there was no public relations department in, in Evanston. Uh, somebody wanted to you know, bring in a member, they brought them, visited the club. Word of mouth was absolutely satisfactory. Not anymore. If people don't know about Rotary, they're not going to join. So your continued work on that is, is necessary. But when you get through those three pillars of the planning guide, there are a lot of other things which are available for you to enjoy in Rotary. And not just as part of a committee, but on a people-to-people -people basis. So I'd like to just bring up a few of those because there are options for you to mix with Rotarians from around the world and enjoy that. Rotary Fellowships. Has anybody been involved with the Rotary Fellowship? Okay. These basically have to do with hobbies, interests, what have you. If you're into ham radio, if you're into stamp collecting, if you have some other quirky proclivity, there's bound to be another Rotarian halfway around the world that has the same interest. And the biggest one in our club, Tacoma 8, is the, I think they're all into sailing. A lot of them have boats, and so once in a while they'll wear their whites and their hats and come in and salute each other. But <clears throat> take a look, you know, when you get back sometime under Rotary Fellowships and see if there's a fellowship which relates to your interest and your hobbies. And it's a great window to share information with people around the world who happen to be Rotarians. A lot of fun. Rotary Action Groups. Has anybody been involved with the Rotary Action Group? Okay. They are similar to fellowships, except they have a cause. The most prominent one in our district is the Water and Sanitation Rotary Action Group, WASRAC. And uh, we have somebody in the uh, Olympia Club who has just put this together. It's a great package. And these are Rotarians, not necessarily from a specific geographic area, from around the world. They have a common interest, water and sanitation in this case. And they work together to help a district or help a club achieve uh, a goal. Rotary Friendship Exchange. Has anybody been involved with that? RFE. Okay. Let's pretend there are eight of you from this club who want to go to Australia. We have somebody in the district, Jeff Young, who will facilitate basically a swap and find eight Australians who want to come here. So it's just another way to enjoy fellow Rotarians and what they have to offer. But not on a club basis, not on a Rotary manual basis, not on an annual report basis, just a fun basis. Rotarians to Rotarians, having, enjoying each other. Great. And let's see what else you can do. Ambassadorial scholars. We just received five ambassadorial scholarship applications. This is the highest number we've received in a long time. So I would hope as you, when you get home, take a look under ambassadorial scholar also and see if there's anybody in your life who might be able to participate in this, okay? And I don't need to talk to you about peace fellowships, because about a week ago, I got the arrival report from Gazar Gorbanov, and then I happened to look at your club roster today and see that he's an honorary member of your club. And he's back there between Duke and UNC, and the University of North Carolina and Duke are not the closest of friends. They're about 10 miles apart, but they're about a world apart in so many other ways. Uh, we had a lot of fun there. We always went over to UNC to party because it was a lot more fun <laughs> rather, than, rather than Durham. But congratulations on your sponsorship of, of him and 
helping him move along in his report. It's very interesting. I really appreciate it. And another little thing you can do, exchange students. We love the exchange student program. We've had so much fun with that. Our club has uh, three incoming students every year, and we send two or three out. And we, as an auction item, we would have three of them come over and cook a meal. A lot of fun. We had to, Christine had to help them out a little bit because sometimes all three of them wanted to cook meat. So we had to expose some of them to their veggies and things like that. And we were in Bangkok last year, and sitting down at McDonald's, taking in some of the local Thai culture. And two young ladies came up, and they saw my badge, which said Tacoma. So they were very excited. But they turned out to be exchange students from Gig Harbor and Port Townsend, who were over there for a year. And a couple of days later, we were at some other cafe, having some other local Thai food. What was it, Christine? Thai. Thai. Okay. You know, Thai meatballs, okay. And another lady came up and saw, oh, Tacoma. And she was a native Thai who was an exchange student over here in this district in 2005. So I put her together with Joan Perkins and some of the other people who were there whom she remembers. You know, it's really neat. And finally, the Rotary International Convention. These are something else. And the next one is in Sydney. And the one after that is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I think Seoul, Korea is in there somewhere. Atlanta is in there. And they just had their first proposal from an African group. And they want to have the uh, RI Convention in Durban, South Africa in 2019. Great opportunity to mix with Rotarians from around the world. Different color, different hue, different belief, different credo. One thing in common, service above sound. So, many opportunities to mix with Rotarians. I'm very proud to serve as district governor this year, and that Christine and I are having an absolute ball. But I do happen to have a souvenir, and something which, if you'd like to put on your bumper, that would be just fine. It says, I'm proud to be a Rotarian, and I am. So we'll have a few of these available. If you'd like to come up and get one when you're done, that would be great. Or if you'd like me to mail one to you in a plain brown unmarked envelope, I can do that. <laughs> okay. Now, I need to have your beloved president come up to the podium. Karen, you've been the uh, president now for, what, three months. So I'm sure you're very worldly and very knowledgeable. <laughs> so you, without any hesitation at all, can tell me why I'm doing this. I'm hesitating, aren't I? <laughs> um, you got me. I'll give, I'll, give you an easier, I'll give you an easier question. <laughs> Whistler. Whistler. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> we are having our district convention in Whistler, B.C., uh, May 2nd, 2nd to 4th, 2014. Why Whistler? Out of districts. Most district governors have their district conferences in their hometown. But we've had it here in Tacoma for two, twice in the last you know, eight or nine years, so we decided to do it up there. And we're doing it in conjunction with another district, 505, which, like us, is an international district. And there's one advantage to that. Well, number one, of course, is a different group of people, all Rotarians, all from our same basic, you know, Northwest area. But another one is the fact that we are able to get a past RI president as the president's rep, as a speaker. Very often, when the district conferences are planned, we don't find out who the current RI president is sending as his or her rep until February or March. So we already know that Kalyan Banerjee, the past president of RI, will be our speaker. Very intelligent man, and I'm sure he will deliver a very meaningful message. So I hope you can come. We're going to have a good time. So that's the first thing that I'm asking of you. Please consider coming to the district convention. Uh, Lakewood is getting a bus to take people up, so that's certainly another option. And Scott, you can work with Greg to see if that will go beyond 1 o'clock. That would be great to do that. The next thing I'm asking you to do is to stretch. What does that mean? That means Karen's been <coughs> president for three months. By the time she gets through, it's about a three-year commitment. One year before, one year during, 
and then one year after, she's still on the board trying to clean up all the messes she made. <laughs> but I just urge you when a president, or in the case of Bruce, a president-elect, asks you to serve Rotary in some way, that you respond positively. It's a lot of work. It's a major commitment, and she needs every little bit of help that you can provide. So reinforce her the good work that she's doing by helping her when she asks you. Please do that. <clears throat> Next challenge for you is E-R-E-Y, every Rotarian every year. We had a very unique district governor class of 538 people. Uh, Ron Burton, who was the president, asked all of us to contribute to the foundation, and we did so 100%. So this is why I have this little button up here which says first class. We were the first governor class to be 100% uh, E-R-E-Y. So I hope you will consider that. I hope, hope you will. Polio, I think we've already covered that one pretty well. And I would have to, I've got to back up a little here, that's okay. Because I do acknowledge the fact that so many of you are wearing your medallions today. So please give yourself a hand. That's very nice gesture. Really nice. So, I have provided you with some options to meet Rotarians in different ways other than, you know, on the club basis. I have given you a challenge to stretch, to go E-R-E-Y, and to continue supporting polio. I hope you will accept these challenges. And I would also like to close by simply thanking you very much for your hospitality. Christine and I had a great time today. And uh, I would just like to ask you to engage Rotary and change lives. <laughs>